Welcome, my friends. My name is Artur Ceroński, and for some time I have had this pleasure to teach you about what is written in God's Word concerning the elementary principles of Christ, uh, that is, basic Christian teaching. Today we have part four, that is the fourth element of the basic Christian doctrine according to the book of Hebrews, of course, and it is titled Laying on of Hands. I would like us to understand one very important thing about laying on of hands. To start with, uh, I would like us to read one fragment from the book of Leviticus. In Polish, this book is also called the Third Book of Moses. Uh, its name comes from the Levite priesthood in the Old Testament. That's why Leviticus. And we're going to read Leviticus chapter 21, verse 10. It says, And he that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, and that is consecrated to wear the garments. And it goes on to describe what he is not allowed to do, and so on. But uh, we are interested in this beginning part. So here we have a priest on whose head the anointing oil was poured, and so he was anointed to be a priest. Anointed means that he was designated sovereignly by God. He has been designated to serve certain functions. So a priest is someone who is nominated, appointed by God. Actually, the philosophy of priesthood was at this time connected with the function of being a mediator between God and man, an intermediary, in other words, someone in between. So we know that in the New Covenant, Jesus Christ is our high priest, the greatest and only mediator between us and God. Uh, I'm going to talk about the fact that now everyone who is in Christ is also called to be a priest, but not in such a way as it as in the time of the Old Covenant, and not as an intermediary between God and man, but as someone who proclaims the priesthood which is in Jesus Christ. Uh, for now, let's focus on this picture we have here of the high priest. This is someone who has this highest honor and is um, totally predisposed to be the high priest. So on his head the anointing oil was poured, so he is anointed and is authenticated or authorized by God. And now we come to the most important fragment for us, and who is consecrated to wear the priestly garments. In the Polish translation, we read that his hands were consecrated, that his hands were authorized. What were his hands authorized to? To perform a function or acts of a priest. His hands were empowered. It means his hands received a certain rank. We are not talking here merely of a physical dimension, his physical hands. The priest um, has certain possibilities given by God, which he should exercise by using his hands. This applies to different areas. But I would like us to notice this. We see here that the entire figure of the priest is holy. Holy means separated from, different than the environment he is in. 
right? So the scripture was written very long ago, thousands of years ago. At that time, God established the whole formula of priesthood. And now, if you are born again of God's Spirit, then your hands, my friend, also have been authorized by God to lay them on other people in order to release certain things which come from God. Now, I would like us to read from the first chapter of the book of Revelation, John's Revelation. This is actually a continuation of what we read about in the book of Leviticus. And Revelation 1, 6 says, And he made us, that is Jesus made us, born again people, he made us king and kings and priests, to his God and Father. This verse is a clear confirmation of what I just said, that every person who is born again of the Holy Spirit is God's priest. So this priest of God, this Christian who really is in Christ um, and functions in Christ, he has got predispositions, skills, as well as he's commissioned to be a priest. What does it practically mean? That he's supposed to exercise priesthood in his life. He is to present the high priest, Jesus Christ, and he should also use his hands for that purpose. This is interesting that one of the elements of the Christian foundation is this act of laying on of hands. You know, our hands are some kind of connector with the reality that surrounds us. We take hold of things with our hands, we eat, we touch, we work with our hands. So we use our hands to have contact with things, to receive things. This is very interesting. Please uh, look at this from the spiritual perspective. So we are the priests. Our hands are authorized or enabled to do certain actions. In Hebrews 10, verse 10, we also read, to complement that other scripture from Leviticus, we read, by that, will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So not only are you a priest, but you are also sanctified, which means that in you there is this formula of performing holy acts. So whether you feel it or not, you have to be aware that you are a priest, you are sanctified, and your hands are designed to release things of God. This is very important. We have to be aware of this at, from the very beginning. The fundamental teaching has to be deeply rooted in our consciousness. Now I would like us to look step by step at different kinds of laying on of hands, at the different functions, areas in which our hands hands of consecrated priests should act. I'm going to show you seven aspects in which our hands are in a sense gates, uh, gates by which we release things of God in these areas. So the first area of function of uh, laying on of hands the one we're going to talk about in the first place is healing. So, our hands, hands of the people born of the Holy Spirit, hands of sanctified priests are meant to heal. We read about it in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 18. Let's go there. Please take a note of all these things uh, to study them deeper later. So we read from the Gospel of Mark 16, 18, 
They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Who will lay their hands? Who is supposed to do it? Let's read. And these signs shall follow them that believe. You are the person who believed in Jesus. You gave him your life. You are born of the Holy Spirit. So this is for you. You have it. You don't have to seek it. You don't have to pray for it. You don't have to deserve it in any way. This is very important. So the power and authority has been given to you. This power that should work through your hands to heal the sick. I will talk more about this in another teaching where I'm going to teach about healing. If you already want to know more about this topic, look for my teachings concerning healing. However, you need to be aware already today that you should lay your hands on the sick people to heal them. The second area, the second function is also described in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 16. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them and blessed them. It talks about children. So God's word says that we should do what Jesus did. Jesus himself said that we will do greater things than he did. And if Jesus laid his hands in order to bless, then our hands are also predisposed to do it. What does it mean to bless? To bless means to make happy. So to break the yoke of failure in someone's life and to bring this person to a place of success. Look, your hands were given to you so you could lay them on people to break the failure in their lives. And they will enter a new area of success that will be opened for them. Do you understand? Your hands are meant to bless, which means to make happy. You should lay your hands on people to bless them. The third area of function is also described in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 2. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Or mighty works or miracles. We see Jesus doing miracles with his hands. What is a miracle, my friends? Well, a miracle is an interference in the natural. It's something that is not natural. And your hands are given to you so that miracles can be done through them. You should lay your hands on people, but not only on people. You can lay your hands on animals, things which need to be repaired. You can do miracles through your hands. I personally have done it many times. I laid my hands on the car engine, um, which then improved its work. My wife laid her hands very often on our washing machine, which stopped working. And well, today we have the money to buy a new washing machine, but there was a time when we didn't have the money, but we had our hands. So she laid her hands on the washing machine and it started working. The washing machine later worked very well for a long time and the only reason why we changed it was that it was very old. You can lay your hands, for example, on a damaged vacuum cleaner and so on. Your hands should release God's miracles. When you see some, something in the natural, some failure in the natural, you must know that this is not the final result because you have hands which are predestined to lay them on people and things to release God's miracles, as Jesus did. And this is also what it means to follow Jesus. The fourth area of function is described in Acts 19, verse 6. It says, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, 
the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So our hands are predestined to release God's power and authority so that we can impart the Holy Spirit to other people. This means that we can baptize them with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given among others by laying on of hands. If there is someone who is just born again but is still not baptized with the Holy Spirit and God's power of a higher rank is still not released in their life, I spoke about it in the previous part of my teaching about baptisms as we covered uh, baptism with the Holy Spirit. Uh, today, I would like you to know that it is possible to impart the Holy Spirit, which means to baptize people with the Holy Spirit by laying on of hands. This is given to you and you can do it. You don't have to be someone special. You don't have to be an ordained servant. You just can lay your hands on the newborn people who need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will descend on people and they will be baptized with him and will speak in other tongues and so on. Now we find the fifth area or the fifth function of laying on of hands in 2 Timothy 1, chapter 6. It reads, Therefore, I remind you, it's St. It's Paul who speaks to Timothy, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. We read here that Paul reminds Timothy about certain incident. He reminds him that he laid his hands on him and as a result, Timothy received the gift of God. What does it mean? It means that our hands are predisposed to impart the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand it? It's very important to impart the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We are not talking about the baptism with the Holy Spirit now, but about walking in a specific gifting, like for example, prophetic gifting, or healing, or words of knowledge, or word of wisdom, miracles, and so on. So you can lay your hands on other Christians and he or she can receive a gift that you have. Or, what is also interesting, he or she can also receive a gift that you don't operate in. It's also possible. The question is, can everyone do it? In principle, everyone can do it. However, you have to be aware that God is calling you to what God is go calling you to and where he puts you. I mean, we should not engage in things which are unproductive. I personally don't run after people to lay my hands on them constantly. But when people want it and come to me, I lay my hands on them and they receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I do it also when God specifically guides me to go and lay hands on someone. So I operate in this area on the basis of revelation. I don't do it schematically. Uh, I want to encourage you to do this also. There is no contraindication for those who are born by the Holy Spirit to lay hands on other people to impart the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But as I said, you need to seek revelation in all of this. Should we do this or not? Sometimes simply nothing happens because there is no revelation. 
the Holy Spirit may not want something to happen at a certain time or let's say in a certain relational aspect. So please pay attention to these things. And now the sixth aspect of function is First Timothy 4, 14. It is written here about the sixth element, the sixth area where we should or uh, where we can lay our hands on people. Four fourteen. It says do not neglect your gift which was given to you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you this is something else than what we read about a moment ago this is laying on of hands in order to impart anointing that's not a matter of one gift only but rather an entire functional area. This is also sometimes called a, a coat of anointing, giving a coat of anointing. In the Old Covenant, we read that when Elijah was raptured to heaven with the entire chariot, his prophetic coat was left on the earth, which with this coat, Elijah had performed his miracles and now his disciple Elisha puts on this coat and starts to walk in it. He starts to walk in Elijah's anointing. And this is a symbolic message about the anointing which was on Elijah and then was transferred on to Elisha. So this verse tells us that we can lay our hands in order to impart anointing to people. Anointing is God's ability to perform specific tasks. Here we enter a level where these things should be done in a very, very conscious way. I mean, of course, every Christian can lay hands on other believers in order to impart anointing. But the question is whether this particular Christian has this anointing himself. If he doesn't, he cannot impart anything, really. Do you understand? This is a different issue. Um, you cannot impart anointing that you don't have. It doesn't work like this. Of course, through a revelation, you can lay your hands on someone and as a result, this person will receive some kind of anointing, but this is, this is also connected with a particular office that you hold. Uh, because if someone does not operate within a particular office, such as an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor or a teacher, and they don't have the anointing which they truly use in ministry, uh, which is something very real and very practical, then such a person is not able to impart any anointing to others. It can even cause frustration. People say, Someone came and said he would lay the hands on me so I would get the anointing and nothing happened. Well, this person probably either had no revelation concerning you or he holds no office or doesn't have any anointing at all to impart. I want you to know that all of this must be the result of a comprehensive understanding of this issue. That laying on of hands cannot be something chaotic. No, it should be, it should all be connected either with a particular revelation or be based on a spiritual office held in the church. 
or it should come from someone's own anointing that they already have. For example, if, if I saw that someone moves in the evangelistic anointing, I would personally go with pleasure to ask such a person to lay hands on me so that I could receive this anointing. I watch these things carefully. I am observing those things. Now, the last seventh area of function we find in the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 23. It says, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord and so on. And we see here that our hands also serve to ordain which means to establish or to appoint the governors in the church. And we can say that this function is also reserved for those who hold a particular office in the church. It's not that any random person can come to you just like that and say that you will be a pastor, for example. Of course, it is possible that someone has a revelation and because of this he comes to you and lays hands on you and says you will become a pastor, but this is rather the case of imparting the anointing. And we can put it in this category. Or this laying on of hands is just a gesture that accompanies certain prophetic information. However, only people who are already governors of the church can appoint the new governors. Otherwise, it wouldn't function properly. We cannot just appoint thing, people randomly for different functions, no. The scripture actually says that this was the authority of the apostles who were God's officials. Still, it is written in the Bible that we should lay our hands in order to ordain. It is also written in the Bible not to lay hands on people hastily. Many people don't understand this issue well. This text specifically refers to the ordination. This text was written to people whom God already appointed to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers or elders bishops in the churches or presbyters or governors. So God shows us here not to ordain the new governors hastily. Hastily means without a revelation or without proper understanding of the situation we're in. This is very important and I want you to understand that this verse which tells us not to lay our hands hastily concerns this element of ordination. You see, my friends, that our hands are designed to lay them on other people. We should do this by revelation according to God's principles. In some aspects, this is for everyone. In some aspects, it's not for everyone. I started today from the most common functions, which are um, meant for everybody. But the further we go, we see that the other functions require specific predispositions. There are certain conditions involved. But the principle is still the same. You are a sanctified priest, anointed by God, and you should use your hands to expand God's kingdom. You should use your hands to heal the sick, to bless, to do miracles, to impart the Holy Spirit, which means to baptize in the Holy Spirit to impart the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to impart the anointing and to ordain. I would like us to see how important this is, since it has been included in the fundamental principles. I take this thing, thing very seriously. In a way, this has become part of my culture. I believe that my hands are holy 
and I really use them as a tool. I'm sharing this testimony with you because I have been successful in this. And I want to encourage you to use your hands the way God instructs you to. Do not neglect it. Uh, don't do it only occasionally from time to time. But on the other hand, also don't be chaotic in this. Uh, may this be conscious, done consciously. Um, let it be a result of a revelation, a result of desires which emerge in you and which also have their confirmation in today's teaching. I would like us to pray. Our God Father, I would like to thank you for these words. Thank you for giving us our hands. Thank you that through our hands your power can work and perform and your kingdom can be extended. Father, thank you that as sanctified priests, as your anointed people, we can use our hands to release your works. Father, I'm praying now for every person who is listening to this teaching. Let your anointing flow on all of these people. May they be fully aware of how they should use their hands. Father, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit penetrate them deeply. Let their hands become the tools which you blessed and gave to them. Amen.